I've got Catherine here and I figured it'd be a good opportunity for all those new microgreen growers out there to uh, just be part of this conversation. Catherine is new to microgreen growing. I'm gonna let her give her, her intro and tell you a little bit about herself and where to find her and stuff like that. But I figured since we're having this conversation, might as well record it and we'll throw it up on YouTube and all you new microgreen growers out there can kind of be part of everything. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Catherine. Yeah, so really my, my health journey was what brought me to microgreens and starting a microgreens business. And I think since finding the work of Anthony William and discovering the power of foods as medicine and also for me, especially raw foods, I had kind of sparked this interest of growing food. Um, we had, I've kind of grown up with a garden and having parents who are into growing food. So for much of my life, I kind of had that perspective and I really was intrigued with growing indoors, largely because of what, so much of what we're up against environmentally. And so I started really in the beginning of my journey, I was really struggling for a long time and a, and a big part of what I was dealing with was fatigue. And I had found that raw foods and later living foods really helped to kind of move things forward for me. And it, it was just like my body was responding in really a positive way. And so I started first just super simply growing sprouts on my countertop. And eventually I <laughs> found like fully raw Christina and Tanny raw. Uh, who else? John Kohler was a big one. And just like randomly one day I was on YouTube and I saw John interviewing this couple actually who was growing microgreens and running a business in their home. And instantly I was just like, okay, this is for me. I thought that I really wanted to do that. And then I reached out to City Hydro, who is a farm uh, or microgreens farm and supplier in Maryland and they kind of help people get up and running and I really what I loved about them was they were using organic uh, coconut fiber which really attracted me because one I wanted to have a living product where customers or my customers could harvest something in their own kitchen and kind of find inspiration with that and and two I wanted to grow veganically I didn't want to use any animal products and I kind of didn't really understand yet how I could do that with soil and then three I didn't want to use plastic so I, I really was all about the idea of you know just packaging up this product and delivering it to customers and it kind of just naturally unfolded from there and today I am I just launched I was telling Ben earlier this summer and uh, I'm about two months in, so very new. I'm still learning and making mistakes along the way, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. And that's, that's pretty much where I'm at. I'm selling, to, selling and delivering to homes and also a number of local restaurants. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then uh, where can everybody find you to, to kind of see what you're up to and check out? your operation and how you're doing things so my business is on instagram and also facebook harvest of joy microgreens and my website is just www.harvestofjoymicrogreens.com cool cool like where are you growing all this stuff yeah, so I'm growing. We I fort it was fortunate that we had unused space on our main floor, and that just happens to be closed off. So I kind of convinced my mom <laughs> to convert it into a, a grow room, and so I have my rack set up there, and I've had to like I know we'll kind of talk about this too, but figure out the temperature control and humidity too that's that's been a huge thing so it's been really nice that I have that kind of contained space 
away from everything else. Cool. Yeah, the, the, the humidity, I, what I learned real quick is that that becomes a problem if you're growing a lot of stuff in a small space that the room gets really hot really quick and the plants don't respond too well to it, right? So did you did you end up getting a dehumidifier for the room? I did. Well, what I ended up, I found like a, a, a unit that was both an AC and a dehumidifier. And oh, so smart. kind of played around with, yeah, for me, I mean, I know everyone's growth space is, is different and has different needs. But for me, I found the sweet spot is like 68 degrees and then 30 30 to 50 percent humidity yeah. but yeah I learned that too pretty pretty early on that you got to get that down <laughs> yeah I think uh our first like we got back here in December and started doing the the microgreens like immediately and the only stuff that grew were like peas and sunflowers because they did okay with the humidity that was in the room this was during the winter so I wasn't dealing with like heat so I didn't really need an air conditioner at this point but um, then we eventually bought like a used dehumidifier and had to pipe it out to a, a window so that was that was kind of a, a learning thing for us was figuring out the dehumidifier but that made a that made all the difference in the world um, and so okay so you've got some racks you got your dehumidifier are you it sounded like you were growing this these greens on like uh, coconut core paths. Are you still doing that? I am still doing that. Yep. Yeah. So cool. I have basically these large containers. Um, Eighteen by thirty six is is the larger size, and I fit eight five by seven grow pads in there. And it's, it's pretty similar. I mean, I haven't even grown on soil, but I think that the grow cycle is pretty much the same. Uh, I'd say maybe, maybe a little longer. It takes me like seven to 14 days. It, it really varies given the crop, but okay. it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's like, I'm like I said, I'm not really like a master gardener or anything. <laughs> and I, it, yeah, it's pretty simple, straightforward to figure out. Uh, mm -hmm. I experimented with the, the paths and it went very well. And that was something that kept coming up at market. So I think what you're doing is pretty cool because like that is something that comes up nonstop every market. Like, can, can, can you grow this on like a pad or something and then give it to me and then I can take it home. Um, and so we've, wow. we've, do, we've wow. done that on, on a, on a couple occasions with peas and they've gone, it's gone very well. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, probably the extent we've gone to, but I think that if you can, if you can do it the way you're trying to do it and you're having good success, then I think you'll, you'll do very good with it because I think there's, there's definitely a market for it. And so are you like bottom watering it on the pad or how are you watering it? Yeah. So I, unlike you, I have to water every day in germation. So that, that is a lot of labor, I will say. Um, but once I move it under the lights into vegetative state, I am wa uh, bottom watering. So I won't, be watering on top like you were mentioning you don't want to water on top when the plant is you know already yeah. reached decent height so I, I bottom water and kind of just pick up the pad and, and go underneath once they're under the lights cool but yeah the, the peas have just been like the real a real struggle <laughs> I yeah. think that I had not great quality because I ordered in the summer and I had been told from True Leaf that that can kind of happen in the heat. So there were a lot of there were a number of lots that just went bad, unfortunately. I don't know if you've run into that at all with peas. Uh, I I just get all my stuff from Mums. I mean, I don't even do do True Leaf anymore unless unless I absolutely need some sort of 
thing quick. Like I run out of a product and I just need like a, a two week fix while mums is still coming because mums comes from Canada. It always takes longer, but um, I haven't had any problems with their seeds. Uh, I do have problems with peas every once in a while where I, I'll get some mold on them, um, even with the humidifier going and everything like that. And uh, what I notice is the peas don't necessarily like a ton of water in the tray. So you'll start to learn like each seed likes its own amount of water. So when you're watering the tray before you're spreading the seeds on top of the soil, um, with peas, I always soak them for six hours before they go on the tray. So I'll soak yeah, them yeah. six hours. I'll have my tray ready. It's that 50-50 mix with the lime. I'll, I'll uh, take a, I have a fence board that I cut to size of the 1020 tray. And I push that down on the tray and that flattens the soil, which then allows the water to uh, flow evenly on the tray when you're when you're putting that water on from the start. Then I spread all my peas on there. Then I take it that the bottom watering tray I would use, I set it over the top with a, uh, a weight, like a, uh, a concrete block. And then that pushes down on the tray and allows all the roots to grab hold of the soil. And then eventually the peas will push that block and that top tray up. And that's how you know when they're done. And then I take the top tray that I had the weight on and I flip it upside down and I set it over the top, which then allows the, the stems to grow taller. And then th by them growing taller, now that tray weighs more. So now you're getting more per tray and it's easier to cut that way too. The longer the stems, the easier it's gonna be for you to cut. Um, if you, yeah, yeah. you know, just flip it and then just put it under the light immediately, the stems are going to be a lot shorter. So th there's tricks to every single uh, microgreen. I I'd say I grow every single microgreen different. There's no like, this is the process for every single microgreen. I think each one grows a little bit different in, in, in my world, in my setup. You know, and I think that applies for everybody because I don't think, you know, like I've read Curtis Stone's book. I've read all these microgreen books and every single microgreen book, the, the process set in place is, is kind of correct, but the timing is what is different amongst all these different people. And I think that is kind of the case in my situation is I don't think there's a standardized microgreen growing guide that just works for every crop. But uh, you learn right, this stuff. Right, and the seed densities are all different. The seed densities are a little different and um, that's important because if you get these seeds too close together, then you get blotches and then mold, mold occurs. So that's a big one too. And that's what I dealt with was a lot of mold issues um, early on. Um, and it was mainly with specific crops. Uh, I'd get them with sunflower, but then they just kind of worked their way, you know, worked their way, uh, out, you know, <laughs> I, I really didn't do anything and they just, just grew and it looked like a normal tray. And even though there was a little mold down there, it just kind of went away because the minute you uncover that you're allowing airflow, you're introducing airflow. And, you know, once you get the airflow from the fans and all of that, the, the, it just goes away. But uh, a, a solution for that is you can take soil and just spread the soil over the top of that spot where there's mold. And that will get rid of the mold too. Um, and I have trays, you know, I'll do like, I'll do 20 trays of broccoli and maybe I get two trays that just get molded out. And, you know, it just happens. And you know, I wash all my trays after every use and that will typically help prevent any sort of mold that lingers on the trays. So I'll wash them, then I'll let them sun dry and the sun will kill off any of that, of that mold. But, you know, it's, I still get it here and there. It's just, I grow so many trays that it, it doesn't impact me 
losing one tray here, one tray there. Um, it's okay, you know, it's all part of kind of learning, learning what works in your setup. Yeah. But, yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. I've, I've found too that it can be, it can be helpful, especially because I have to have a specific quantity each week for the chefs. I have found that it's, it's good to grow a few extra pads in yeah. the case that something molds or more so in my case, I have issues with like an even growth at times. And I think that that's probably a water issue. So it, it can be helpful yeah. to have a few more pads just in case. Yeah, and you might get uh, uh, extra orders within a week too. I mean, that was always happening with yeah. our, our grocery stores we'd grow so many trays and then all of a sudden the grocery store would call us and say, Hey, we're out of your stuff. And then I had no more trays to give them. So you always just want to have extra on hand. And what's the worst that's going to happen. You're going to get to eat a bunch of extra microgreens. <laughs> you know, that's a good thing. 